Time your keto sneaker, give it up. Then jump for Don Burger. I like to, this, is, this presentation is called Time Capsule. It's going to be about 45 to 50 minutes. Um, I'll, and I want to start with what I call an audience presenter agreement. An audience pres presenter agreement is an agreement between me, the presenter, and you, the audience. And it's got three things in it. The first one is you have a get out of jail free card. If at any point this bores you, you have more important things to do, you have an appointment or a call, you can get up and leave and walk away. It's all good. I will not be offended. I recognize your time is valuable and I appreciate the invitation for being here. The second, is you can join the conversation. You can do so on Twitter via the hashtag or pound sign, FFEA, um, or my name, spelled Dan, pronounced Don, it's an Israeli name, at Don Berger. And then finally, you can steal everything. Everything here is you can just take. Take photos, take notes, the presentation will be available to you later on. Because again, the, the, the purpose of conferences is to learn and engage. Why am, I, and why am I speaking to you today? Well, the first thing is I'm an event goer. So this is a photo of me in Bonnaroo, which I go to religiously every year. And I love events, and I've been to many events in my lifetime. Secondly, I'm an event planner. I ran uh, events and meetings for a congressman for four years, and then I ran an association for two years, about 15,000 member association, did about 30 special programs per year. And then finally, I'm an event believer. So I run a company called Social Tables out of DC. And we are event planning software. And basically, this is me last week standing with the mayor of DC, commit, committing to hospitality because of a new uh, round of funding that we got. So I really believe in the events and the power that they can uh, to bring, it, bring us together, to celebrate, to learn, to network, um, and to ideate. So this is my company, and this is the only thing you'll ever hear about, that, about us. That's us last week. Um, I'm proud to be in DC. And then this is our software. It's a little hard to see, but our software is used to diagram spaces. So you can take our software, uh, throw, it, throw a map in there or a diagram and actually overlay your festivals and fairs. And that's, that's all about social tables. So let's talk about learning objectives for today. There are three learning objectives I want you to focus on. The first one is we're gonna identify trends that profoundly, profoundly impact our industry. Second, I will share with you my predictions for events in the next 20 years, and I have 29 of them. And then finally, um, I'm gonna teach you how to execute a visioning exercise just like this one. So that's going to be really exciting. So I can teach you actually to do the same thing that I did. And just so you know, the reason why no one has met me until right now is because I really wanted to participate in the conference yesterday, but I was so engrossed in making this presentation, I spent 12 hours on it. I, I'm not paid to speak here, by the way. I spent 12 hours in my room, um, uh, room 304 for the, for the catering staff if you want to send anything. Uh, I spent 12 hours straight in my room working on this presentation. So um, I want you to go ahead and turn to each other and say, which one are you most excited about learning from this uh, from this presentation. Please go ahead. So quickly, by show of hands, who's most interested in number one? Okay. Who's most interested in number two? Yeah, that's what you're here for, right? Who's most interested in number three? All right. Who's interested in more than one of them? Excellent. You'll have a good time then. All right. So um, let's quickly talk about current trends in technology. Um, the first one, this is really about um, the hospitality industry. Businesses spend 1% of their revenue on meetings and events. So 1% of annual revenue is spent on meetings and events. Next, meetings and events account for half a trillion dollars in the global, in, in, in globally. Half a trillion dollars spent on meetings and events. That's everything from transportation to catering and everything in between. And then finally, um, the total revenue that hotels, just like this one, make from events is $100 billion. So it's really a big business. Now what about kind of other global trends? Well, this is pretty crazy. I want you to check this out. So in North America, the percent of uh, web traffic from your mobile device has, was 11% in 2013 and 19% in, 20, in 2014. So that's a 5%, excuse me, almost a 10% increase in how much data we're using from our phones. We're just using our phones a lot more. But check it out, globally, that's even bigger. So America is actually behind on this stuff. Again, just a, just a very high level, mobile web usage is up almost by 10% in just one year. And then this is a bit complicated, but basically what I'm trying to say here is there's a lot of platforms being used more and more. It's pretty much what you need to know. And then finally, this is from last year because I couldn't find stats for this year, but this is how many up pictures are uploaded to each of these um, platforms a day. So we're looking at 
um, almost half a billion photos uploaded last year to social media every single day. So we're seeing a culmination of technology in a ridiculously rapid rate, and all this is gonna to continue to accelerate. So what is a futurist? That's a futurist. <laughs> His name is David Ching, and he's the futurist at AOL. AOL pays him probably like a quarter million dollars a year to predict the future. I'm not that guy. <laughs> he's a freak, people. Um, so I'm gonna do a quick interactive because I want everybody to just close your eyes. Is he a personal friend over here? Do we know him? I didn't mean to offend him. The family, the Shing, the Shing family. Um, everybody close your eyes. The year is 2034. You're now looking at the cover of Time Magazine. And on that cover is a picture of an event happening now. The year is 2034. And on that cover of Time Magazine is a photo of an event happening. Imagine the lights, imagine the robots, imagine the drones, imagine the music, imagine the people, what they're wearing. All right, now go ahead and open them and just, just, just blurt them out. Who, who wants to tell me what they saw? Any volunteers? I have a hand over there. I saw that hand. You know, presenters, we watch for those hands. What did you, what did you see? Oh, yeah. It's an adult audience, by the way. You can have fun. What did you see? I said I saw Beyonce. You saw Beyonce? Yeah. So you saw a 70-year-old Beyonce just twerking on, on the stage. Amazing. Well, I guess the point of my, my exercise was that it's really hard to do. It's really hard to predict the future, but we're going to try to do that right now. So the first thing I did, instead of actually doing it myself, is I went to my colleagues and I said, I have 45 colleagues in DC. They're all young, they're all millennials. I said, hey, I'm doing this presentation. I need your help. What do you think events will look like in, in in 20 years, and here's what they said. One person said, corporate America will be excited about meetings. Another person said, attendance via virtual holograms. Another one said, Some, you want speakers like myself will actually have to be certified in adult education, something pretty important and pretty serious. Real-time seat availability. Robots, lots of robots. <laughs> Events will never end. So this individual said events will just keep going. They'll be like 10 days in a row. That person has done a lot of drugs. <laughs> there will be more events. I could have told you that. Without AV, <laughs> because we'll all use our smartphones. So, you know, Suzanne talked about, you know, being using VHS, and then we talk about using slides. Well, in the future, we'll probably just use our screens, and everything will be beamed to our screens. And wrapping it up, 100% customizable online venue, uh, venue. So it's something essentially you can pick what you want for your event. All the partners will, will cooperate together and you can do everything from the web. You wouldn't have to pick up the phone. Full automation. And then finally, attendees will have contextual information about other attendees. So as I walk into a room, I know that Damani is also a technologist and I know that, um, I know that Renee is an event marketer, etc. So here we go. My 29 predictions for the events industry over the next 20 years. I've broken these predictions into, into um, seven categories. Um, the first one is the discipline of an event, event planning. Well, the way I came up with this one is I looked at some patterns and I saw that 25% of corporate planners say that they're, they'll stage more events next year. I learned that Live Nation concert revenue was up 29% in the first quarter of this year. We saw that Google search for sporting tickets has gone up over two years, over the last two years. Oh, and by the way, the middle class worldwide is going to increase from 2 billion to 5 billion people. Well, all those things tell me there'll be more events in 20 years. I had to start the first one with a throwaway. Well, let's dig a little deeper. More events mean, means more meeting planners. There will be, the number of events, of event planners will significantly increase. And this is just by way of numbers. You know, you look at the US, labor, uh, US, uh, US Department of Labor, they predict that by 2022, there will be 33% more event planners. Currently, um, there are 90,000. They predict 120,000 event planners in just less than 10 years. So that number is going to continue to increase. And with more event planners, you're actually going to get um, event planners who are strategic. So what do, I, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is event planners who are strategic are focused on objectives and organizations' missions and not on logistics and administration. 
things will become more automated we'll learn about that a little bit later but event planners and festival planners and meeting planners will have to be more strategic in their work because all the other stuff is going to be done by software so all this this is going to require tremendous uh, learning and what that means is oh hello this is called a learning break throughout my presentation I'm going to be introducing learning breaks to teach you something to kind of take get, get away from that that monotonous tone that I have into my predictions my first learning break is to talk about the meeting planning process pyramid and what I talk about by becoming objective objective oriented really quickly if you think about an organization's mission or your clients mission that's at the bottom you then have objectives for every meeting on top of that you have planning scheduling logistics project management speakers speaker scheduling etc you then have communication email marketing social media you have sourcing site selection transportation and housing you have logistics badge check-in you have management surveys make sure we did a good job how we can help and how we can improve and then finally you have reporting through data so all these things come together and the one thing that brings them together is technology because it syncs over everything in the event planning life cycle together so that's called the meeting planning process pyramid something we developed at social tables so when I mean that meeting planners are more strategic and event planners are more strategic and by the way I use the term very synonymously I recognize people here are planners in general and not just meetings or events or whatnot so I apologize for the for the difference in, in terminology but anyway it all starts with the organization's mission and the meetings objectives so all these strategic meetings what does that mean that means that event planning will become a more respected field currently in the United States there are about 80 universities many of them in Florida that offer event planning or meeting planning as a discipline as a major um, in fact at social tables we're really proud we give our software away for free to over a dozen universities to help students learn event planning um, so we're going to see the rise of event event accredita uh, accreditation programs uh, in the future words like meeting design and strategic meeting management and meeting consolidation will become par for the course these will become accepted terms um, in our in our speak and just for those who don't know, meeting design is this idea that you have to architect a meeting, everything from the content to the seating design. Um, and meeting consolidation is the idea that all meetings and events in an organization should happen in one centralized department, just like HR. So everything has to go through the meeting planning department to make sure that our meetings and events align with the organization's objectives, because we're spending up 1% of our revenue on meetings and events. So meeting design and meeting consolidation will become commonplace terms. And currently, just so you know, amongst all corporate planners, about a third of corporate planners have a meeting consolidation or strategic meeting management uh, program in place. So it's pretty small and still a very new field that will continue to increase over time. Quick learning break. Um, at Social Tables, we're all about meeting design and diagramming. This is an example of the old way and the new way of doing a meeting. So for example, we used to be a classroom style um, setup where you can kind of just listen and took notes. We're now looking at interactive sessions. Collaborative half moons, for example, is a way to um, increase learning. And that's why I'm focusing on the group dynamic in this kind of session. Event marketing. This is the next chapter of predictions. So the first thing is event will be part of a 365 event planning kind of uh, marketing strategy. And the reason that's really important is because marketers will realize that events are just another touch point for whatever they're trying to accomplish in their goals. So events will be respected part of a marketing plan um, in the next 20 years. Sponsorships will be integrated into the experience. Now this is really, really important. Has anybody here heard of the, the term uh, permission marketing? Yeah, or, um, or authentic, authentic marketing? So this idea that people want to be marketed only if they give you permission to be marketed. This, this, this concept of just uh, sitting around and just getting ads thrown at us and sponsors thrown at us does, is, is, is really, doesn't have really a high ROI. So what, what's going to happen is sponsorship will be integrated into the experience. So what I mean by that is Anazar Bush, who I think is, sits on the board of this uh, great association, will no longer just say, they're presented by Anheuser Bush. They'll have the Anheuser Bush experience at a local festival. This is an example of Uniqlo. Uniqlo is a, is, a, is, a, is a clothing company. And what they did is they leveraged Pinterest to just spam, essentially, Pinterest. They didn't really spam it, but put all these photos on Pinterest that made it look like it was an advertising, but it was actually part of the Pinterest experience on the Uniqlo page. So as you scrolled up and down, it showed you their entire spring collection. So quick learning break, and I'm so sorry I had to do this to you, Suzanne, but it, my approach is to not talk about sponsors in this way. 
My approach is to talk about sponsors in, in, in a different way because selling sponsorship is a salesperson's job and it's not easy. So selling gold or platinum or bronze sponsorships is not going to cut it anymore in the future. What you're going to have to do is start selling more meaningful packages to your sponsors. How about something like the engagement package or the lead package or the, or the um, um, awareness package? So essentially, if sponsors know exactly what you're selling them when you're selling them instead of just saying bronze or gold. So they know that if they're buying the engagement package, they know they have the opportunity to engage with their potential consumers. And if you're selling them the lead package, they know they're going to get a list of all the potential buyers. So another thing that will happen in the future is that true ROI will be achievable. Today, there are 8 billion sensors in the world. That's a 32% increase from last year. We carry sensors everywhere we go. They're everywhere we go, literally in our phones. That's how many, there's 6 billion sensors just in phones. So in the future, ROI will be truly achievable because we'll be able to measure as people walk by, interact with booths and vendors, as they actually walk into an event, we'll know exactly when they walk in, what they bought, and so on and so forth. Event technology, something I'm an expert in because I'm a former programmer. Meeting planning, as we know, it will be automated. So when I talk, when I talk about planning as being automated, that means that you, will just, you won't even select the date for your event. All calendars will be completely integrated, and then your, the event date will be chosen automatically based on the audience you're trying to target. Furthermore, travel accommodations will be automatically set based on those people's calendars. So we'll see full automation, and again, this is in line with what I was talking about, the move towards strategic meeting, meeting and event planning. And a quick learning break. This is a product called Zapier. It's free. You can go online right now and connect over 250 pieces of software and make them talk to one another so that if something happens over here, something happens over there. So for example, if somebody buys a new ticket, you get a text message. It's really, really a cool way of automating the workflow that you have going with your event, with your event planning software. It's called Zapier and it's free. Virtual audiences will become a basic component of events. So what used to be in the 1990s, people holding up their lighters and pumping their fists, is today people holding up their phones and taking a photo. Well, imagine in 20 years that right photo is actually people behind screens somewhere else experiencing that event or meeting. So imagine just a third photo over there for showing, showing the future of people actually behind, behind screens and not being able to attend in person. Now, this is something that many of my colleagues in the event planning software will probably disagree with, but it is my prediction that in 20 years, event planning software will be free. We're seeing the culmination of open source software, which is essentially software that you can just see the whole code and edit yourself. We're seeing literally 200 pieces of software that do the same thing. There are 200, there are 200 vendors out there today that offer event registration software. That's crazy, it's, it's a commodity, and it's gonna be free. When you're looking at event technology and event software, I urge you to look at these four things when you're, making, when you're considering your software selection. The first one is that it has to fit in your workflow. If you like email, it should work with email. If you like text, it should work with text. If you like going on a website, it should work with website. The second thing is that it has to be cloud-based. It has to be on the web so it can be accessed from any device. Finally, it to, at third, it has to be open so that you can plug in your current systems, your databases, whatever you're using, it has to be open so you can easily integrate different pieces of software together. And then finally, it has to be device agnostic, which means that the experience on the iPhone or on the tablet is the same exact experience you get on the web. So that's my technology scorecard. I would just, what I do is when I look into technology, I just check off those boxes to make sure that all those things work for me. Custom event apps will not even exist. You know, this idea that you have to download an event app just for three days, it takes up memory, you have to sign up and do all this other um, annoying tasks is just over and done with. The reason for this is because we, we as humans can only interact with 30 apps at a time. That's a scientific fact. More than 30 apps we just can't interact with. So many times we, we download an app and we never open it up. 70% of the people that download an app don't open it a second time. Event apps will be dead and they'll also be a commodity, and there'll be full HTML5 solutions you can go from the web to access the event. Group business will be booked mostly online. Right now, pretty much anything over 10 people can't be booked online. Well, that's going to change, and most of group business will come online. A big chain is actually going to set a mandate for 15% of their uh, 
group business to be booked online in the next five years. We're gonna see this more and more happening so we can book really, really big, big groups online, just like this one. And what's really exciting about that, that really falls in line with the automation piece I was talking about, where you actually have, you know the scheduling, you know what's going on, you know the room availability, you are able to score the different groups that are coming in to make sure that the right group gets the business. So most, most, group, most group business will happen online. Event logistics. Event space will be more commoditized than ever. Nowadays, it feels like everybody has a rentable event space, and that's gonna get only worse. And the reason for that is because there's just more spaces we can rent and regulation is becoming more lax. So it'll be even more difficult to market your uh, location and space, and you, people will be massive challenges to actually market your space. Uh, and we'll have to find new and unique ways to do that um, through things like a virtual walkthrough, where you don't have to do a site visit in person. Maybe put on a pair of um, Oculus Rift glasses to actually do the walkthrough, or look through your phone to do the walkthrough. Site visits are a massive waste of time um, for, for many, many hoteliers, and a big time suck. Quick learning zone, you know, I want you to think about something real quick, and that's once the contract, by the way, who here sells space, or has space that's sellable? Cool. So one of the things that we don't think about as salespeople is that the meeting planner or event planner's job starts once the contract is signed, and your job as a salesperson ends once the contract is signed. That's a massive misalignment of incentives, right? So what's gonna happen in the future is we're, hoteliers and venue, venue owners and whatnot are gonna have to start being masters of meeting design and meeting objectives. So for those of you who sell space, and I'm sure you do this, but let me just remind you, ask questions that are meaningful to your planners, like what are your event objectives? How do you measure success? And those kinds of questions that show you have an, in, in, you have an innate interest in making sure that this is a successful uh, event for them. Everything you will need at an event will be available on demand. It's called a sharing economy. Right, so if you need if you need a, somebody to go um, get you if you go get a I don't know a hacksaw, you can go get it on on your phone. If you have to go get um, an email catered, you can go do so online. You can do it today through uh, services like TaskRabbit or Instacart, um, or even Uber or Airbnb. But you'll be able to do everything online, and it'll be readily available in real time. Event security will face some of its biggest challenges. Now think about this, in 20 years, marijuana will be legal in every single state. That is awesome. <laughs> um, but that, you know, the, the rampant use of mobile phones to, to mobilize crowds, um, the increased synth uh, synthetic nature of drugs, the rampant use of alcohol and drugs will actually pose significant risks to event security to a point that we can't even think about, we can't even mitigate against. So event security will face some of its biggest challenges in 20 years, and it's something you have to be ready for. Event business model. The entire business model of events is going to change, and let me show you how. First, there will be subscriptions for events, so you no longer just go buy a one-off ticket. You can pay a monthly subscription, just like Netflix, and go to events whenever you want. Something like, like opera season tickets, sort of like that. But I envision it happening for all events. Or think about like a, a, member, a member, member curated events where only members can go to events. That will be much more common and that's called, that's called the subscription economy. It's where we just pay a small fee every month and get something in return. Quick uh, learning zone opportunity here. This is how the subscription economy works. Um, it starts with acquiring a customer, you then build a customer, you collect the payment, you nurture that customer, you then um, account manage that customer, you measure their success, um, and then you iterate your software, and then you increase your price. So what's really, really important about the subscription economy is that it's, a, it's, a, it's essentially a social contract between consumers and service providers that says, hey, I will give you a steady flow of income if you give me guaranteed and improved service over time. So that's a really, really interesting shift. It's no longer just a quick trade, it's a continuous relationship. It's called the subscription economy and it's happening before our eyes. There will be no cash at events. So I don't carry cash. I know many other millennials don't carry cash. In the, event, in the, the future of events will be no cash. And that's simple, I don't have to go into that. But things like Bitcoin, um, virtual currencies like Bitcoin and uh, virtual wallets um, are all gonna be used and we'll never have to pay for anything again with cold hard cash. Events will be crowdfunded. 
So instead of us as organizers saying, hey, we're going to do this on this time at this date, and we're going to do, and this is going to be the content for the event, events will come to life as a result of people who want to attend an event actually paying money and collecting money to bring an artist or a vineyard or, um, I don't know, something else, a sport team to their hometown. And we will no, they will no longer rely on us as planners to bring, they'll do it themselves. So events will be crowdfunded. Free and illegal events will put our profession at risk. So as a young kid, I used to go to a lot of, I used to throw parties, and I used to, when I was in high school, I went to, I threw this illegal rave called an outlaw, uh, which was back in the 90s. It was called, oh my gosh, it was under the George Washington Bridge. And it was an illegal party, and I had 250 people go. That was the first kind of cool party I organized. And as, as marketing will become uh, more dominant in our lives, people will try to do things outside the box. And I envision there being many, many illegal events happening, which will pose a risk to our professional um, uh, re record, and we'll have to mitigate that kind of risk. Event content. So education will be more important than ever for successful meetings. Things just like this, the quality of my presentation, the learnings that you get out of, of conferences such as this one, will be more important than ever. Um, and education will continue to play a dominant role because learning is changing, right? Education, no matter what, continues to be subpar, expensive, and yet really, really important. And for those three reasons, we constantly fail our kids and, and, and um, college students with subpar education. Events like this one help mitigate that and help provide quality education. So education will continue to be a key role in events and meetings. Con content will be crowdsourced. So instead of me saying as a planner, this is who's coming and this is why and this is what we're doing, you as attendees will decide what will happen at the event and what the program will be like. It's a complete shift of the model where we have to rely on data and input to know how to curate our events. So we're going to go to our membership and say, hey, what do you want to see? And we'll be able to leverage their, their Facebook social graph and other, and other things to actually curate content for their needs. Events will be a, an artist's dominant source of income. We're seeing this already with the proliferation of streaming um, and, and other free music services. Everything is going to be free in the future, and artists are going to actually suffer the brunt of it, and they'll have to rely solely on events in order to make most of their money. The problem is, as marketing goes up, only the artists that have a lot of money will be able to, to get their name out there. So there's a real risk there. But I think that'll be balanced out by content being crowdsourced um, and, and, uh, and events being crowdfunded. But artists will, be, will suffer the brunt of, of, of this proliferation of, um, of events. Or excuse me, of streaming, of streaming services. Event attendees. Well, how are attendees affected? Well, first, events will be smaller and more intimate. That's how we learn best. When we bring a ton of people together, they really can't enjoy it. So I envision a future where events will happen more frequently and more in a smaller scale. Quick learning zone when you're doing a meeting. By the way, we're in the swan, so I found seven swans. Seven is the ideal number for uh, a, a good meeting. Because any time you add in somebody past seven people, so when you go eight and above, you're actually diminishing the potential of good results by 10%. That's according to a Harvard Business School study. So by the time you get to about 15 or 16 people, you're going to get zero results out of your meeting. The ideal number of a meeting is seven. Discovery will be seamless and perfect. So now I use an app called Songkick, and it, it looks at my iTunes library and tells me what artists are coming to town, the town that I'm in. Well, unfortunately, I don't have all the artists I love in, in Songkick, and even, or in iTunes, and even more unfortunately, I don't even know all the artists that I like. Well, in 20 years, software will know exactly what we like and be able to tell us who's coming. So discovery of finding great events will actually be um, perfect, and we'll know exactly what to attend and when. Attendees will pay more money to attend experiences and not events. So what I mean by that is we actually go to events and we're fully immersed. It's called immers immersive entertainment. We're fully immersed in the experience and not just going to this vendor or that vendor and seeing that show or this show. We're actually attending. It's an entire um, some multi-day event. This is, for example, the Haunted Hayride in L.A. that Mark Cuban on Shark Tank invested $2 million in. Um, there's also uh, Sleep No More in New York, which is, again, very immersive entertainment. This will become very, very commonplace in the future uh, because people want full experiences and not just kind of like a two-hour thing. Quick learning zone. If you're ever trying to understand how your attendees are experiencing your event, we at Social Tables and, um, and um, 
this is something Experian, the, uh, the, com the meeting planning company talks about a lot, is the event journey map. And this journey map actually takes an attendee throughout the entire experience of their event. So it starts out with announcing the event, attracting, anticipating, entering, experiencing, engaging, exiting, and extending. And if you actually do an exercise where you bring your colleagues to sit down and think about the event through the attendees' eyes, going through all those steps of ex experiencing your event, you will find that your production will be much stronger because you will take into consideration every single touch point from the announcement to the extension of your event. Audiences will be a thing of the past. We're no longer going to call them audiences. We're going to call them fans. And the difference between audiences and fans is that audiences tune in when the show is over and fans start tweeting about it and talking about it when it's starting. Really, really important distinction. So we're, we're going to be more and more committed to the fans that support the artists and, and, and clients that we support. Face-to-face -face interactions will be more coveted than ever. At Social Tables, our mission is to inspire face-to-face -face experiences. This graph right here shows you over the last five years how we're spending our time with media. As you can see, our mobile device, any kind, everything digital is going up. So it's pushing everything else out. Very, very soon in the future, digital will be 100% of that. So that's why face-to-face -face meetings and events and experiences will be more important than ever. And finally, speaking of being more important than ever, events will be more important than ever. And this is my 29th, by the way. I believe in events. I believe in the power of events. I believe in the power of meetings to educate and events to experience. And events, therefore, will be more important than ever because of the growing middle class, because of the proliferation of technology, because of the fact that information is readily available for everyone. We will see more events in the future, um, and that's something we should all be proud of and excited about because we're paving that way towards that kind of future. So um, with that, let's bring back our friend David Ching. Um, and this is hard to read, so I'll read it to you. I want to kind of get the energy up in the room. Uh, I know it's, it's Friday afternoon, everybody's excited to get out of here, but I'd like for you to just talk amongst yourselves for a couple of minutes of which ones do you believe and which ones don't you believe. Right. Although with audio, quality. Awesome, thank you. All right. Wow, I'm hearing so many great ideas and discussion, and I love that because that's what events are all about. You know, they're all about engaging each other, and you're not going to, you're going to actually learn more from talking to each other and your peers than you're going to learn through me. And the fact that there's still a conversation going on right now is something that makes me really happy because that would have, that's what events are all about. And that's the kind of, that's how, when we reflect back and we think back about what, we're, what we learn, that's the, how we learn best. So, um, I, I'm, I hope, I'm glad that, that was, I was able to get your juices flowing over there. So, you know, Maybe your face can be there. Maybe you can be, <laughs> uh, this guy's gonna find me and kill me, I think. Um, you, if, you, if you can find him talking, it's really fascinating. What, what kind of accent do you think he has? What country? L LA? <laughs> we got LA, what other, what, what kind of accent do you think this guy has? A, like, a, like a Japanese kind of accent? Okay, Southern, like, like, like Texas? He's Australian. Yeah. You, well, you had in Australia? Yeah. We had in Australia. He's crazy. Um, so anyway, you know, when you're doing this kind of exercise, maybe your face can be there. And let me tell you how to do this kind of exercise. Well, what, when you think about the future, we do, at Social Tables, we do a game, a game called On the Cover. And essentially, it's doing exactly what we did in the beginning of this presentation, is we take the, uh, the, the cover of, of a magazine, and we think about what kind of announcement do we want to think about X years ahead. And then we think about all the bylines and the photos and the captions and the quotes and all the other things that go on with that article and we crowdsource it internally and then we put it all together to try to find and imagine the future, find some commonality and imagine the future together. So that's the activity we do. So by the way, happy anniversary to you all. Um, it's been my pleasure to speak to you. I appreciate, I know we ran out of time. I know people have to go. I really, really appreciate uh, the opportunity to speak to you. Again, I love to educate. I love to talk about these things. I love to do these kinds of things. That's why I do them as much as I can. So thank you for the invitation. If you want to stay in touch with me, um, my contact info is up there. Um, if you give me a business card, I'll gladly send you the presentation. If you want the presentation, it's available online for free. I'm happy to talk, email, or anything if you need anything. Um, and with that, I, I don't know if we have time for questions or not, but I think that's a wrap. So thanks again for the opportunity. I really appreciate it.